We were freshmen at Milwaukee Lutheran High School, and uh, we had the same Latin class. Her last name was Thaney, my last name was Schreiber, so we sat next to one another, and I knew immediately that she was the one. Many older adults grow lonely after the death of a spouse, but others experience loneliness while their loved ones are still alive when diseases like dementia and Alzheimer's strike. Yeah. And the roses. Wow, that's great. Yeah. Down there, the roses. Marty Schreiber was the last man you would have expected to wind up lonely. The one-time Wisconsin governor, Schreiber, now 75, married his wife Elaine 54 years ago and raised four children. Everything that is good in my life becomes of her. Schreiber's wife, Elaine, now suffers from the advanced stages of Alzheimer's. Many people, thousands of millions, have experienced what I'm going through, and I understand that. And my heart goes out to them, and it's such a strain on the caregiver because they see their loved one changing from who they once knew to someone who they know no more. I like your hat. Thank you. Yeah. Where is it from, do you know? No, I don't know, but you got it from somebody. <laughs> <laughs> Elaine's symptoms of Alzheimer's started slowly at first, before her condition rapidly declined. Uh, she would be getting lost on her way in the automobile to very familiar places. She's a great cook, and major ingredients. She no longer was that cook as time would go along. Earlier this year, it became difficult for Marty to care for his wife. He decided with his family to move her permanently to the Lutheran home in Milwaukee. It is lonely, and uh, it, 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 it is lonely, but again, I, I can't be too self-pitying because every person who's lost a loved one has their life changed. Now, aside from his visits to see his wife, Marty must learn how to cope with being alone. I'm writing a book and uh, it's dedicated to my two Elaines. Uh, the first, of course, is the one that I met as a freshman, and the other Elaine is the one who has Alzheimer's and who is a different person. And I have come to learn that in order for me to be a good caregiver for the second Elaine, I have to let go of the first Elaine, because as long as I hold on to the first Elaine, I'm never going to be able to understand and work with and, and, and help the second Elaine have moments of joy uh, and an opportunity for uh, moments of comfort. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Glory, glory, hallelujah. It, it's a lonely uh, kind of journey. His truth is marching on. It's not a tuna fish casserole disease. When I had cancer, and I was homebound, people would bring over tuna fish casserole. When I had something wrong with my leg, people would bring over tuna fish casserole. People do not fully understand Alzheimer's, do not understand the journey that the, either the patient or the Alzheimer's caregiver is taking. They don't understand that. Because of that, they tend to be standoffish and they stand, tend to be uncomfortable because they simply just don't know. How's that? Where are we going? We're gonna, we'll go to the, uh, the cafeteria room. Okay. And just look out at the courtyard. The first couple of nights, maybe the first week or so as you go through, your loved one not being with you, well, you know, you just, you know, they're not here, they're not here, and all of a sudden, it begins to dawn on you, this is the real thing. They're not coming back. I mean, this is it. When, when you realize that that's, Everything is all over with. Um, that's that's a pretty difficult time. <laughs> why why do we have a line like this with hats? Well, because sometimes you like to change them. Oh, okay. But that that you've got a good hat on now. I think that's yeah, perfect. Well, I like this one. Do you like the red one? The caregiving affects the spirit. It affects the heart. It affects the mind. It affects the body, as you you struggle to try and put all things together, and again, knowing that whatever once was is never going to be again. He wanted to get a, a picture of you because I told him how pretty you were. 
are you nice? <laughs> so, and he just couldn't believe how pretty you are when I told him. So now he can see for himself in the whole pictures. Oh, you are so funny. Well, that's good. I'd be lost without you. I'd be lost without you, kid. That's for sure.